here is sir and uh, and the respected professor sitting here i'm also grateful to deepak sundar ji for having brought me here i'm also grateful to all of you for having come here to learn about the topic how to unleash the inner potential <clears throat> i take one minute uh, to offer a prayer which will create auspiciousness to you and everyone here om gyana timirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshoran militam yena tasmay sri guruve namaha namo om vishnu padaya krishna prishtaya bhutale shrimate bhakti vedanta swamini tinamane namaste saraswati deve gauravani pracharane nirvishesha shunyavadi paschat disha tarane जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवसदी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल भंगम लंगायते गिरी कृपा हम वंदे श्री गुरो दिन तारण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्यश्वर वन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर युअर प्रेजेंस एंड आई ऑलो थैंक एवरी वन for the invitation <clears throat> the topic today is actually how to unleash the inner potential indian indians are not very much aware of this term unleash leash means a rope with which you usually tie an animal like dog in america so how to if the moment you release a leash dog will go so likewise we have an unlimited potential do you know edison thomas edison has more than 900 patents he has more than 900 patents he was not born twice you can also if you imbibe the qualities you will achieve you can do and undo things i have been traveling all over only to let people know this one fact a hey, you are endowed with unlimited energy you can do and undo things if only you follow certain tools <clears throat> so the definition of potential is the latent ability or the quality that will lead to success we have abilities we have qualities but if we learn to unfold it definitely it lead to it will lead to success much more than we can imagine so i humbly request all of you to please pay attention and if you take two points home i'm sure your life will become better why i want to why I, why i want to share this today students are depressed frustrated anxiety problem there is a university of ucla university of california los angeles campus there is a big tower but this tower is known for suicides students in the, in i mean hardly 20 years why what is making them make a decision like this my humble request please you you are endowed with unlimited potential and if you realize this you can do and undo things so we are all endowed with that wonderful quality today i'm going to tell you a story ready so early 19th century this place is very well connected because at least 15 days a month i stay there actually brooklyn <clears throat> so early 19th century so government of new york wanted to build a bridge brooklyn bridge connecting both the boroughs new york and brooklyn so they were looking for i mean the technology is not that much developed 100 years ago they were looking for um construction companies to come forward and uh, offer quotations few few construction companies responded 
And finally, the contract was given to this company headed by Washington Roblin and John Roblin, father and son. They already had experience of uh, uh, constructing bridges. They already did one in Pennsylvania. The government, though it was very difficult to do because it was a bridge that, is, that was going to be built across uh, the ocean. <clears throat> Fine construction started, but then what happened? One day there was an accident. Life means things that will happen, things will go beyond your expectation. The father died on the spot. The son sustained injury from neck to toe. And, uh, and he was hospitalized. So, then all the construction crew felt this would not happen. Because the only one person or persons, father and son, knew how to build the bridge. Father died, son is about to go. In the hospital, struggling between life and death. But this gentleman was determined. So what he did, though he sustained a lot of injuries, in the present, being present in the hospital, he developed a code. He developed a code of communication with his wife. And he started tapping. She also learned that code. Code of communication, trying to understand what husband was trying to tell. And as, as uh, the husband started giving instructions to wife how to build the bridge, just by tapping on the shoulder, she started decoding those instructions. She learned strength of metals. She learned some other things related, related to construction. Believe me, that is how this bridge was built. Can you believe? <laughs> the then president of America, when the bridge was built, he was the one who walked. The CEO who built the bridge was still in the hospital, couldn't walk. But the bridge was built. Why I want to take this example is, when everything goes very well, we are, oh, I am an engineer, I am a doctor, I am a professor, I, I, I. But things, things don't go well, then you become depressed. I have chosen this first example. When I presented the same presentation in University of Cincinnati and later Ford Motor Company, I, this, this is the third time I am presenting this actually. Please, problems will come. Every day is not Sunday. But if you, if you learn what I am going to show, the qualities, you will do very well. <clears throat> Today, I used to work with this, actually, you know, DBS Bank Singapore, a software consultant. So, I was actually making this presentation. So I was looking for an acronym. Post Bank was next to my company those days. So uh, these are the qualities we need to inculcate in our life to go forward. Positive attitude. Very important thing. I'm going to show you a video before I speak on this. Positive attitude. I don't know how to click it, but uh, I'm sorry, you know, technology problem. So the first quality is actually positive cause attitude, which is very, very important. <clears throat> okay, I wa please watch this video. <clears throat> then I'll speak on the topic. No, sound is not coming. Sound is not coming.
much that I like, but I'm very thankful that I have one of the chicken drums in here. People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool. I was at a water slide uh, all by myself. Everyone obviously said the bottom one was fine with me, and I'm just waiting for other people to come down and be right down here, freaking out. They're like, you know, like it. And I'm so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know? There were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I'd asked things, I wish I'd asked for this, I wish I'd asked for this, I wish I'd asked for this. Because what I've seen in life is just a couple of key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life. I'm just going to say, what kind of a husband am I going to be? I can't even hold my wife's hand. It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. I love life. You know, so many people come and say, how come you smile so much? And I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's very simple to tell you tonight. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life. There are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand. and You don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long this storm's going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned in my life. Being patient is really hard. I tell you, it's the hardest thing. But I realize that man, I have hands to hold my wife's hand. When the time comes, I'll be able to hold the heart. I don't need hands to hold the heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home and angry at others. It's scary to know how many people actually feel like they're worth nothing. Every single girl right here, right now, I want you to know that you are gorgeous. You are gorgeous just the way you are. And boys, DVD, I share my experiences in life of how I've overcome challenges and seen a new, fresh perspective in life. To be thankful, to dream big, and to never give up. I speak to children, youth, and adults about key issues and principles that I've applied in my life that have given me the strength to conquer all that comes before me. Positive attitude. You will go very far if you develop this one quality. What is positive attitude? Seeing the positive side of things. Problems are common. Problems will come. Every day is not a Sunday. One day it may rain, one day it, one day it may snow, another day it may sunshine. But you have to go forward. So, no hands, no legs, no worries. One day, one mother came to me in Dallas. He, my son, got, uh, he secured a seat in med school, medical school. Please, uh, give him blessings. I, I told, I, I mean, I prayed for him and once he left, I told the mother, tell him to do some mantra meditation. She said, what happened? I'm going to say as we go forward. There is one quality explained in Bhagavad Gita, 14th chapter. 
mode of passion, mode of ignorance and mode of goodness. Your son is in mode of passion. What is the qualities of mode of passion? When things go very well and you, you know, you are climbing on this ladder of success, you are happy. But one day, things will nose dive, then you are depressed. That is the nature of this quality, mode of passion. Your son is in that, to bring him little down, there, there is no doctor in the world who can cure this. Only spirituality does, uh, does offer the cure. So tell him to do that. So, so, what is very important in our life is, problems will come, you know, blizzards will come, storms will come, but see the positive side and go forward in your life. As this gentleman is doing it, he's making everyone laugh. If you, if you fall sick, you'll be depressed. Can you believe by birth, this is a congenital problem, congenital disease. Still is traveling all over, making everyone happy, filling their hearts. Amazing, I was impressed. So develop this wonderful quality called a positive attitude. In problem, if you see the positive side, if you see a silver lining in the clouds, you will go forward, ladies and gentlemen. Second quality is service. Edison may be very intelligent. He still has his uh, laboratory in New Jersey, Orange, New Jersey. I know, but somebody is very successful, somebody is very intelligent, somebody is a little less, somebody is a little less. But irrespective of what you are, if you cultivate this quality of service, amazing opportunities are abundant, you will be exceptionally successful in your life. How many of you want to hear this story? 2000, uh, I think 18 or 19, International Women's Day, one lady was invited. All the top-notch ladies who are very successful, not just in India but all over the world, were called to attend this seminar, this session, addressed by a very uneducated lady. Can you believe? They were all top-notch successful lead women leaders of the society. They were present, only listen from somebody who is an illiterate. But what was her qualification? She studied life. She studied life. You know, this is, uh, you want to hear her story? How many of you want to? Please. If you want, I can go there. I, this is okay. can, you, can everyone see? This is fine. Or you want me to go there? Great. So, <clears throat> her name is Sindhutai. Sapkal. They were, she was born in a poor family, farmer's family. And she had to every day take buffaloes, water buffaloes to the, to the grazing grazing ground. As she would take all the buffaloes to the grazing ground and then she would run to the school only to receive beatings from the teacher because she was late. More or less it is her everyday, everyday affair. She would be beaten up because she was late. But she says, those were the happiest days. Went to the school late being beaten up because the life she never expected would teach such a sad, sad lessons. At the age of 12, she was married to a person who was actually 20 years older than her. And by 18, 19, she became a mother of already two. But then, one day, she did one mistake, which costed her a lot. She went and uh, in that, that village, the local mafia of the village were exploiting all the people. And uh, it was like a bonded slavery. All the local villagers were used to work very hard with practically no pay. What she did, she was very bold from childhood. She went and complained to the collector. 
that uh, this mafia, local mafia leader is using uh, the local villagers under slavery and immediately government reacted and offered a, you know, they, 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 <coughs> they manned a commission, they called for a commission, a special inquiry to look into the matter. To look into the matter, this person was so upset with the turn of events, what he did, he went to the husband. By this time, she was actually ninth month pregnant. Husband, she, he, this mafia leader went to the husband and told her, hey, your wife is cheating you. You are thinking your wife is very chaste, but uh, she is not. In fact, the child she is bearing in the womb is my child. I have a relationship with her. Husband became so angry when he said, said like that without even checking with her is it, whether it's true or not. She dragged her from the home. She dragged her and uh, she, she kicked her, kicked her, kicked her in the womb. And uh, when she, because of that uh, heavy kicks, ninth month pregnant, she aborted the baby, baby and she was in that pool of blood. And to convince everyone, he felt she died. To convince everyone, all the villagers, he dragged her to the cow barn, we call Goshala. She dragged her to the Goshala to give an impression to everyone that she was killed by cows. She was, she, she was killed by the trampling of the cows and he left her there. All night, you know, with the baby lying next to her in the pool of blood, she was lying there between life and death. The cow kept her between her legs and protected her and the baby from the dogs because dogs smelled the blood came to came to eat the baby and she also protected the mother and baby from other animals all night and when she woke up in the morning she understood in-laws would not let her come inside then she went home this she's from maharashtra actually she went home only to receive to receive rejection from parents no, no, no. We never knew you have such a bad character. You have to die, you die at the in-laws home, but don't come here. She was rejected by parents. Rejected by in-laws. Rejected by the society. Young woman with a newborn baby. She took a rock and she cut the umbilical cord. And she took her to, she took her searching for place, no place. You know, India, we are, we, you know, India is also a very dangerous place nowadays for a young woman. So she would stay in cremation grounds. And people, people would come and uh, burn the bodies. I think in Maharashtra, they would offer some flour, wheat flour, all these things. She would mix with water that wheat flour offered to the dead body. And she would make, in the funeral pyre, she would make a chapati and eat because hunger is so, you know, so much. In order to protect herself from this bad elements of the society, maybe she would be raped and killed. She would, she would act, you know, <clears throat> she would act like, act like a mad woman. And that is how she saved herself. Then, one day she decided life is pitch dark, there is no hope. Then one day she decided to commit suicide. She went onto the train tracks with her baby because life is pitch dark, there is no hope, hope at all. She was sitting on the train track only to be killed, but it was very hot. So then what she did, it was so hot. Anyway, just for a little shade, she came under a tree next to the train tracks. Then she saw the tree. The tree 
with the branch was cut, one branch which was cut, the branch was hanging and offering shade. That is when he got the strength. Wow, this tree, though the biggest branch is cut, this tree is suffering, but the cut branch is offering me shade. Even at any point of time, however beaten up you may be by nature, still you can do service. Then she got up and said, I am not going to kill myself. I will do something. When this tree is offering shade to me, there are many more people in the society like me looking for a shade. Let me, let me offer them a shade. She thanked Indian Railways for running the train slate. <laughs> and uh, she woke up. She started staying on the railway platforms. So many children, orphans, poor people, they did not even have a square meal. At any point of time, you can do, you can do service, if only you have a heart. I am sure you must have seen traveling in trains, these beggars would come and sing. She would do the same thing, not for her child and for herself, for the orphans. Wow, what a big heart. Huh? Amazing, amazing. And she would collect all the orphans and uh, she would go and beg by singing, whatever the money would come, she would feed the orphans. But one day she thought, she was a little partial to her baby, this one year old baby. No, no, I should not be partial. What she did, she went to the nearby town and she donated her child to the orphanage. That way she can be very impartial to all. She could, she could share her love equally among all the orphans. But how difficult it is nowadays, a young woman with no security is fighting for a cause. She knew her path was treaded with thorns, but she never gave it up. Five children, ten children, fifteen, hundred, two hundred, five hundred. People saw that and offered a home. She never looked back. Two homes, three homes. She became the mother of 1,500 children. Amazing. The story is not over. Her children grew up understanding the chastity of the mother. The children joined. But there is a punchline to the story. One day, an old man came asking for help, allowing him to join the orphanage. Do you know who it is? Husband. This is the person who kicked her to almost death, coming and asking for shelter. She said, I will not give you shelter as a husband. I will give you shelter as one of the children of the orphanage. She adopted him as a child. And she told all the orphans, this child, this grown-up child needs a lot of love. Because when somebody becomes cruel, there is a reason. Nobody is born cruel. So, ladies and gentlemen, forgiveness. Wow, forgiveness. Even if you don't need you don't you don't need to be worried about others, you are letting a prisoner go from your heart. Who? It's you. If you forgive somebody, it's not weakness, it is strength. She forgave him, offered him, offered him a place to stay in the same orphanage. But that day she promised, nice devotee of Krishna, my Lord, I will take care of the cows. I will, I will worship you because you saved me. If one person resolves, no matter what happens in my life, I will protect this, this, this. I will protect dharma, I will protect the cows, I will uphold the values. Believe me, society will change. At least you will offer a solution. She passed away, I think, last year. 
no? With the, she received 270 awards and big, big cinema stars wanted a picture with her, a selfie with her. Why? She, did li she led a life of a example of service, exemplary service. Amazing. Whether you are talented or not, if you are talented, definitely you can use it in better way, no doubt. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have this one quality of service, one quality of forgiveness, one quality of gratitude, that the before gentlemen, my question will go for will go forward. Third one, both examples I have showed you. This third quality, um, the they, they possess this. I want you to possess this. Sense control. Choosing to do what is right when I feel like doing wrong. We all have first, the first lesson of Gita is, uh, actually I want everyone to please meditate on this. Choosing to do what is right when I feel like doing wrong. Today, movies are telling you to do wrong things. Social media is telling to do wrong things. Why? They want to take your money and uh, get your five minutes wrong happiness only to suffer next 50 years. I'm going to figure. Who are the victims? Children. Who are the victims? Students. Who are the victims? Youth. Trust me, people look for, everyone wants to go to America, but America has more problems than India. I mean, I've been staying there for more than 23 years now. <clears throat> so, who will tell you, A, do right things, especially when you're grown up, you don't open up to the parents. You open up to the friends. But a friend is also a victim. How many of you agree? I'm honest with you, one day I was doing a presentation in my university. Not this presentation, I gave them the, the adoption also positive attitude. I was doing that. Since then, I started sh going to colleges. One boy came to me and said, if only you made this, if only you, you, if you only had come two weeks before and you had presented this presentation, my friend would not have committed suicide. So nice about positive attitude. I was really impressed with that day actually, a couple of years ago. Then I chose to, I, I made it my life to come and meet students. It was so innocent, so pure at heart, so much of positive energy, so much of facility, but uh, wrong direction, misled. Who will lead the nation? The youth. But if they're misled by social media, by movies and by environment, nobody will come with you. Everyone wants to exploit you. Probably, the Prabhu is sitting here, a monk, somebody sincere, they won't help you. So self-control, the first lesson of Gita, you're not just free with the body. Dehino smriyata dehe kaumaram yabhanam jada tada dehantara praptir dhiras tatnam priti. Your parents were holding you. Saying you're eight pounds, twelve pounds. Do you weigh only eight pounds today? Eighteen verses. Krishna tells you, "Hey, you're not the body; you're a spirit soul. You're not the body; you're a spirit soul." And the what is the biggest lesson after that? You're not the mind also. You're not the mind. You're not the body. Who are you? That eternal, knowledgeable, blissful spirit soul. Today's soul is stuck in the body. Because of ego, we think we are this body. That's why we are looking for pleasure. What is the nature of the soul? Ananda mayo abhyasat. The nature of the soul is to be happy. But today we don't know that we are a spirit soul. Soul is stuck in the body. So we are look, trying to look for happiness from the tongue, from the ears, from the eyes, from the nose. Forgetting that we are a spirit soul that is actually looking for happiness. I have only one line. With this one line, you can make a friendship with anybody in this world. 
whether he is a ceo or a superstar or a tennis star how many of you want to know that one line with this one line you can make friendship with anybody just go to one person you want to make friendship and say i don't want to lie to you but you look so beautiful <laughs> really come for lunch tomorrow my father didn't tell me that my brother didn't tell me that my mother didn't tell me that this this person is telling me how many of you agree as a soul we are all beautiful because of the karma maybe here and there it's not even if we are beautiful because of the karma 20 years lack like, years later if i come to your home you look like your father or mother 40 years later if i come to your home you look like your grandfather or grandmother how many of you agree but krishna says in gita you are the chachno you are always there when london declared the democracy 1104 by signing magna carta we were there when krishna spoke gita to arjuna 5000 years ago we were there when alexander was trying to invade 326 bc cross in trying to cross sindh river come coming to india we were there thousand years later also we will be there that is the first lesson of gita so what is the nature of the soul to be happy but because nobody tells us we try to we try to find happiness by seeing nice things by eating nice things by hearing nice nice music and the skin is looking for opposite sex touch whole world is behind that that's what movies are capitalizing on but even if you do still you are not happy because the actual person is not happy it is like the honey is in the bottle you are trying to lick the jar you are not licking the honey one day one monk came and said if sex life is the happiest thing prostitutes should be the happiest people on the planet but prostitutes are the most miserable people why the soul is not enjoying so my request to you please practice sense control you are all sitting here in such an engineering college means you worked very hard but my request to you please work hard for truth also in america i tell our people whatever energy you put for your engineering or medical entrance put 50% in the spirituality first thing you'll be very successful in your career second thing you'll be very successful in your family life third thing you'll be happy one of my god brothers was doing a presentation in a mighty one professor got up seminar is anger management she said i am very successful in mit i wrote so many grants i have 28 phd students i am very successful in the college everyone looks towards me i am a role model but at at home two times divorced and you know my children don't listen to me why actually i was not present otherwise i would have given her a correct answer university expects university's expectations are different family expectations are different you need mode of goodness sattva gun for maintenance but you need performance in the office in the college that is rajya gun whatever you apply here will not work at home so in the college you need to wear one hat at home as a mother as a spouse as a wife you need to wear another hat if you wear the same hat of the college at home you will be a failure who will tell that so <clears throat> many people especially in the west the big big uh, authors they write books based on one book bhagavad gita one other said i come and present it in india because i know very well indians don't read gita <laughs> they are reading my books but they don't know this is a camouflaged version of bhagavad gita he made that statement one of the famous motivational speakers of the world so let's let's in gentlemen sense control student life sense control strictly then get married perfect there's nothing wrong take responsibility 
Do you know America practically every marriage is a love marriage? I think I should, this example works very well for you. Should I tell you? Every marriage in America is a love marriage. You know what it means? During courtship, during friendship, the boy says, tell 12 o'clock in the midnight. When will it become 6 o'clock? I can't wait to see you. <laughs> three, year, three years after marriage, I don't want to see you. <laughs> hey, what happened? I'm serious. Some states in America, 70% of marriage are divorced. How many? 70% of marriage. Nowadays, nobody is getting married. Hey, why divorce? So much money you have to pay liars. Don't get married. Stay together. Whenever you want to live, you live. And who is the problem? Children. Orphans. This is America. Because America did not have Ramayana. America did not have a Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> Many times as a monk I thought, I prayed, Americans should read Ramayana. The chastity of Sita, the chastity of Ram. Three months ago, I was invited for a seminar, invited for Diwali festival organized by the New York mayor. And my ears were, wow, enjoying like anything. This person, not Indian, an Afro-American descent, first time read Ramayana. He was giving lecture on the chastity of Mother Sita, Eric Adams. Wow, amazing. And his entire lecture was not on Diwali, but on Sita and Ram. And at the end, he spoke about Gandhi. And he was not just a politician. He was actually New York Police Department chief before becoming the mayor. And he doesn't need to glorify Hindus because that not many Hindus were there in New York City anyway. Means he really felt impressed. He was inspired by the morals given in Ramayan. He was taking this opportunity to tell people. I really, I really commended him. So my request to you all, ladies and gentlemen, please practice self-restraint. You are not the mind. Mind always tells you to do wrong things. Should I give an example? I don't know how long should I continue. Otherwise, you know. Okay. Boys or girls, most of the time, you especially, your life is dependent on your friends. Shakespeare says, show me your friends, I'll tell you who you are. If your friends are drunkards, you're a drunkard. If your friends are a, a womanizers, you are a womanizer. If your friends, what is that? If your friends are very soft-hearted, soft -hearted, soft natured people, you are. If your friends are devotees, you're a devotee. It all, it's all based on your friends. So three friends will come and say, "Hey, chalo, party me jayenge." And your mind says, he came, they came all the way, go to the party. And your intelligence says, a week wise, tomorrow you have a tight schedule in the college, don't go. And uh, so then you will say, tomorrow I have a tight schedule in the school, in the college, I don't want to come. Actually, I go to NYU, New York State University. This boy, young, young very young, Indians only. You know, my friends took me to, you know, a pub. I drank and so much headache. Are, who asked you to go and drink and who asked you to get headache whole day? That happiness may be half an hour. This headache is 24 hours. My experience, you want to share? You want to, share, you want to hear? This much happiness, this much suffering. How much? This much happiness, this much suffering. This much happiness, this much suffering. But because nobody tells us you are not the mind, you are not the body. We, 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 we are willing to go through Rasagulla, 30 seconds. Gulab Jamun, another 30 seconds, one minute. So, Rasagulla, Gulab Jamun, Rasagulla, Gulab Jamun, one minute, one minute for 30 years. Then diabetes. <laughs> so many hours you have to spend. There is no pure pleasure in this world. There is no pure pleasure in this world. Every pleasure in this world gives you pain. 
ఏజం స్పర్శద ఏజం స్పర్శద భోగ దుఃఖ యోన ఏవతి ఆద్యంత వంత కౌంతయ నతేశ్వర మతే బుధా అర్జున ఇఫ్ యూ గో ఫర్ దట్ ప్లెజర్ దట్ యు ఆర్ డిరైవింగ్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ కాంటాక్ట్ ఆఫ్ సెన్సెస్ దట్ విల్ బి యూ ట్రబుల్ అరే పాంచ్ మినిట్ గా సుఖ హే లేకిన్ పచాస్ గంట గా దుఃఖ దేగా నో బడి నోస్ సో సో ప్లీజ్ ఇఫ్ లైఫ్ ఇస్ అ చాయిస్ యూ వాంట్ టు సపోర్ట్ మాయా ఆర్ యూ వాంట్ టు సపోర్ట్ ద అబ్సల్యూట్ ట్రూత్ గాడ్ హీ సే గీత ఆర్ కృష్ణ లైఫ్ ఇస్ అ చాయిస్ సెన్స్ కంట్రోల్ అండ్ నెక్స్ట్ పాయింట్ ఈజ్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ బిల్డింగ్ సెల్ఫ్ కాన్ఫిడెన్స్ i will do it i will do it i will do it i can do it i'll do i did it you need to have confidence in yourself it's very important why this is the reason <coughs> what is that um in order to build self confidence you need to believe in yourself then actually i'll tell you i have an example also this person came to and and of course indian a, a, a doctor he, you know he cleared um, what is it ucm usml cleared that everything he finished he got into residency at the end uh, you have a board exam for america throughout his career 90% actually in india to get a medical seat is more difficult than engineering seat how many of you agree this person throughout his career he topped but one day what happened in residency also he cleared all the exams final exam which is relatively easy but board exam they will give you a certificate you can practice as a doctor in america he failed suddenly what happened that's where he was hit hard throughout his career he was a bright student including all the exams he cleared i am honest with you he he has not taken that exam past 8 years 10 years and he was so affected by this uh, defeat his enthusiasm slackened his confidence slackened one day his sister came to me he lives in new york city can you please uh, do something for him i said i sat with him and said please why take the exam no no i'll fail are you take the exam i'll fail my point to you not like that one day one girl called me that actually i wrote a book that's the reason i came i'm traveling now this girl said two weeks before mcat exam one day she called me i'm not going to take the exam i said what happened last year also you did the same thing you didn't take the exam no no my preparation is bad hey you prepared last year also but you didn't take the exam exam phobia then i told her look you will fail how much you will fail let us see because then you you will start from there start from scratch okay even if it's minus 5 okay even if it's minus 8 okay even if it's zero no problem because then you have a correct assessment but i i know you are very well prepared no no my parents my friends will you know they will not have any any opinion on me my my parents will denounce me and i will not take the exam i told no names okay i know you will fail but this will help you in the next year promise me that you will not end your life second thing promise me that you will write the exam i don't want to write the exam but i i gave her enough support finally she agreed to write the exam only to see the marks how much she failed that's what i convinced her but something in me knew she was very well prepared ladies and gentlemen today i am very happy to tell you she is a doctor mm-hmm. <coughs> that support is needed same year she cleared she same year she got in med school she did very well so once in a while you go down you are depressed you need little encouragement you need a shoulder to cry maybe it is your father or mother or it is your good friend but open up speak nothing is the end of the world 
Why I'm telling you, believe in yourself? This is the reason. You know what this is? Our brain by scientists is split up into two parts. The outer brain, it analyzes facts and figures. The outer brain, it analyzes facts and figures. But the internal brain, it's called limbic brain. Limbic brain, it, uh, there is no language, decision making. I mean, you all have an experience. You go to the market, you want to buy that. The sales rep is trying to convince you. But something is telling you don't buy. <laughs> something is telling you don't buy. That is called limbic brain. Limbic brain is the one that makes the decisions. So now the outer brain. So if a sales rep comes to you who has full belief in himself and presents to you that much extent, your limbic brain is con convinced. To the extent that person doesn't have faith in himself, that much extent you will be the faction figures you are liking it. But something is telling no. How many of you are understanding? So you should have full faith. Steve Jobs joined engineering. He went to the college for one month, engineering classes. He said, I don't like it. Then parents said, what will you do? I will learn calligraphy. When I read it, uh, no Indian father would allow this. <laughs> Allowing the child to drop down from the college, engineering college, and learn uh, calligraphy, I mean, art of writing. Means uh, it's like arts. You know? <clears throat> so, should I, do we need to stop? Or? 30 minutes I'll finish. Okay, that's 30 minutes fine. Thank you. <coughs> so, but I want everyone to hear. He said, look, I like calligraphy, the writing. I don't want to go to that engineering college. America means if one, one advantage is there in this area. Parents cannot control the children. <laughs> you do whatever you want to do. But that is also a problem. Most of the time people do wrong things. But here, he said, I'll write, I'll do calligraphy. Parents, what can they do? Once you cross 18, no one can control you anyway. But he learned calligraphy. But then he said, instead of joining a job, I will start a company. Parents said, all right. From his garage, he started a company of assembling computers. You know why Apple computer is very successful over Microsoft? The GUI, the front end is very good. Microsoft only has a MS-DOS, operating system, you have to type everything. With Apple, mouse click, it has a 256 fonts. It has how many fonts? Where did he get it from? Calligraphy. So, more than degrees, you need to have faith in yourself. You need to be talented. Then, whether you are a failure, anywhere, if you have, if you have belief in yourself, you will do and undo things. Should I continue? So, what is the, what is the, uh, I'm sorry, what is the, I'm sorry, sorry, wait, wait. Believe in yourself first. Even if you're a failure, no problem. Wow, I can do things, I can undo things. What our little failure is only momentary. It's only temporary. But I can do and undo things. Then, ladies and gentlemen, you will never know the definition of depression. You will never know the definition of anxiety. You will never know the definition of stress. <clears throat> and the next one is uh, abilities. Abilities, I'm going to present you three things presented by the 16th century poet and a devotee Rupa Goswami. These three things you need to carry in your life. Three things, what are those? Enthusiasm and uh, determination and patience. But for determination, he says one more thing, confidence. 
But anyway, so enthusiasm, determination and patience. We will see one by one. Utsaha nishchiyat dhairiyat. You know, so determination. Hell or high water, you have to be determined. No matter what, I will go forward. There is a club called Santa Monica Club in America where if you want to take part in Olympics, maybe, maybe 100 meter sprint or 400 meter sprint, if you join this club, it's a very, very prestigious club because if you get into the club, definitely you will get a gold, I mean, Olympic medal. You know, if you are going to compete for a 100 meter sprint, you know how many miles you have to run every day? 25 miles to 40 miles you have to run. Wow! How many miles? 25 miles. You know how many kilometers? 1.6 into 25. You know? <clears throat> oh. Anyway, 25, 16 is how much? 40 miles, 40 kilometers. Every day you have to write, you have to run. 40 kilometers. Oh, what a what a hard work. Huh? So just to get just to take part, just to just to qualify for Olympics, you have to every day, whether it rains or sunshines or snows, you have to run for 40 kilometers. <coughs> so you need to have you need to be determined. The next one. <coughs> Patience and persistence are the providers of the progress, Tim Fargo. If you ask me out of the three qualities, enthusiasm, determination and patience, what is very important? Patience. This will help you a lot. This will help you a lot. What is the one? Patience. I am also, you know, uh, leading an organization in America. One thing I learnt, patience, you know. So these three qualities are very important. What is the first one? Enthusiasm. Be enthusiastic, it is not easy actually. How many of you agree it is not easy, be, not easy to be enthusiastic all the time? How many of you agree it is not easy to be enthusiastic all the time? Pretend. What do you do? Not like you come, um, they will be depressed. So, so what is that? If you smile, others will smile. You know, so it is very important. But carry this one quality, enthusiasm. <coughs> I have another seminar, <coughs> Edison. <clears throat> when he invented a battery, he also invented a bulb. During the invention of bulb, he failed thousands of times because those days, just to create a vacuum was so difficult. <clears throat> Somebody said, you failed 3000 times? He said, no, I didn't fail. The invention of bulb has 3000 steps, he said. <laughs> Means every time I failed, I learnt what I should not do. Every time I failed, I learnt what I should not do. Ladies and gentlemen, don't worry when you are a fail, when you are, when you are a failure. To err is human, but don't repeat it. Today you are late by half an hour, tomorrow don't come late. You learn from that and go forward. But always uh, enthusiastic. That is the first one. The second one is, uh, as I said, uh, this is very important determination. Very important. How many of you have goals? How many of you have goals? Write it down. Write it down. Put it in your closet and see every day. I want this. Write it down and put it in your closet and see it every day. I want this. That is how you strengthen that is how you are strengthen your faith. I want this, I want this, I want this. And what is the last one I said? 
A journey of 1,000 miles begins with a single step. As I said, patience, patience, patience. And some things don't go well for years. Big, big superstars, singers, and Hollywood stars, they were a failure for a very long time. But they never gave it up. What is that quality they exhibited? Patience. One of, one of the famous presidents of the world, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, was a failure. He was defeated in his college elections. And again he contested as American president, failed. Actually throughout his life, failure only. But at the end, one time he won and he proved himself as one of the best presidents of the world, Abraham Lincoln. So what is very important? Thank you. <clears throat> so we are, we should have a vision. Very important quality. Who is a visionary? Who can see what others cannot see? One day two salesmen went to Africa. And one salesman said, these guys, everyone walks on the road only. Actually, they are there from a shoe company. Now, they were sent to increase the sales. First guy said, no, 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 nobody. They don't, they neither have the money nor the interest to wear the shoes because they are used to walking barefoot. Second guy said, went and said, wow, so much opportunity. We can, nobody wear shoes, so we can sell all our shoes. But the first guy is telling they don't have money. But if we make our shoes attractive, definitely they will buy. And the second guy became very successful. He sold so many shoes. So what is very important? Vision means, uh, visionary means one who has a vision. Beyond others can see. Beyond others can see. I am cutting the story short because we have to go forward. <clears throat> so this is very important. Can somebody read this? Never give it up. I have seen monks. I take one minute. Swami Prabhupada, the founder of our, temp, our organization, he failed in India for 30 to 40 years, continuously. Then he got an opportunity to come to America. So he thought at least whole world is following America. So if I can convince Americans to convince the rest of the world, including Indians, then uh, my message of Gita will go across the world. My message of Lord Chaitanya will go across the world. You know, I have a question for all of you. You have been trying a job in India on Python, but every two months you are laid off for 10 years. Then one day your friend comes and says, hey, come to America, I'll offer you a job. Oh, thank you. But where is the job? What is the area? Python. What will you say? <laughs> no, no. So I am not very good at Python software. Will you hesitate or not? So here, this Prabhupada failed for 30 years, 40 years continuously. Now at the age of 70, he was offered a passage, free passage to America. Who will try? He said, no problem. I want to serve. He came to America with 40 rupees. On the way, he had two heart attacks and seasickness. There was nobody in America to receive with a garland. This gentleman, 70 year old with two heart attacks, 40 rupees equal to those days 10 dollars. Believe me, that is how he started. He went to a few Americans and said, please help me because this guy is kicking me out. They said, Swamiji, we'll pay you, we'll, we'll rent this apartment for you. We'll pay two months rent. Anyway, your visa is expiring in two months anyway. Already you have two heart attacks. Third heart, attack, third heart attack comes, you won't be there to even know that. So, two months we'll pay the rent and after that you should be on your own. He said, I don't want your money free of cost. I'm on opening an international organization. I consider this money, two months money, as a membership fee. And everyone laughed. Hey, you don't even have money to pay to the rent. You're already 70 years and your visa is expiring in two months. That is how this gentleman started his first storefront temple in New York City. After 12 years, he left this world. But in this 12 years, he convinced 
not only North Americans, South Americans, Europeans, but he also convinced the Russians. Middle East, Middle, we have temples in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan. All over the world we have purity. He did not want to give up because the cause is, cause is very divine. So my request to you, never give it up. Next one is knowledge. Okay, <clears throat> you have heard a lot, but this is very important. You, how many of you heard a stepping stone? Failures are the stepping stones to success. But there is another thing. Success are, successes are the stepping stones to failures. If you don't have a right attitude, if you don't have a right mental 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 attitude, definitely will be a failure, irrespective of how intelligent you are. No one can be more intelligent than Ravana. Actually, let me tell you, Vibhishan was not that much intelligent. Vibhishan is not that much determined. Maybe equally determined, but he did not have that many abilities. Possessed by Ravan. But uh, because of his uh, hard work, because of his achievements, Ravana became proud. I cultivate, I also know so many CEOs who are multi-billionaires in America. One CEO told me, Around 90 to 95% of companies in America, software, any company including software, they don't last more than 25 years. Because of the money they make, overnight they become multi-billionaires and they start using that money in wrong things. And uh, in that process they become degraded. And what is the end result? They'll declare their bankruptcy one day. So with all the great achievements, Ravana became proud and uh, he started offending people. One day one Siva told me, why did not meet you 20 years ago? Ever since I met you two years ago, I have not even fired one gentleman. That's why I said patience. Today universities are not teaching patience. Universities are, I don't know, at least America, I know that. Universities are not teaching uh, character. Crown and glory of life is character. So patience is very important. So Raman, what he did, <clears throat> he collected so many curses because a performer, so much money, name and fame. One day he said, I want to see Lord Shiva. Nandi said, Lord Shiva is in private quarters, you cannot see him. Hey, you don't know me? This is Ravan. I can go wherever I want to go. You can go wherever you want to go, but you are not allowed. Ravan becomes angry and said, you are looking like a monkey. You are looking like a monkey. You are telling me I can't go inside. Nandi became upset and said, you are calling me monkey. One day you will be humiliated by monkey. First curse. He was humiliated by monkey. Likewise, because of his performance, because of his pride, he offended so many people. Otherwise, Ravana, visibly no death. So much power he had. So, but what happened? Because of the pride, he collected a lot of curses. But contrary, his brother Vibhishan, very humble, very grateful. I have a question for all of you. How many of you are grateful to your parents? How many of you are grateful to next these teachers? We should be grateful to parents. We should be grateful to teachers. In future, if you are married, you will be married. You should be grateful to your spouses. So call your mom and dad and say, Mom, thank you very much. I am very grateful to you. Because of you, I am what I am today. Hey, your mom will cry on the phone. Your father will cry on the phone. Just because you are exhibiting, you are expressing your gratitude. Okay, how many of you will do that? Call your mom and dad and say thank you today. Okay, only one person? Okay, they can go, I'm not, not calling, sorry. Ma, she's telling nicely. You can go, go home and tell, offer your gratitude. Trust me. 
I, I tell this, if you are married, go and tell this to your spouse also. Thank you very much. Because, right, your gratitude is the altitude of your success. These tiny qualities, in America, what is very important now? Servant leadership. Do you know how, why Stijas is successful? He maintained five, six people who are very talented. He was grateful to them. And he provided them money. He took care of them. What is the management sutra? Today in America, servant leadership. Don't control them as boss. You go and sit next to the chair and talk to the mess and get the job done. Ford company, I go. I used to go regularly actually. Ford Motor Company because I'm from Detroit. So servant leadership. Google servant leadership. Don't act like a, don't, don't act like a boss. But... Uh, as a servant, <clears throat> anyway, we are coming to an end. Einstein says this, if you want to go far in your life, you as a manager, you should know your weaknesses, you should know your strengths. How many of you know your weaknesses? Be honest. How many of you know your strengths? My request to all of you, you want to be successful, Plug your weaknesses. Enhance your strengths. You'll be very successful. So don't let your weaknesses come in your path. But enhance your strengths. And we are coming to an end. I'm also leading an organization. I said, without this, you cannot do it. Steve Jobs, he had a very good team. All the people who are very successful, they had nice team. I have a video. Team, unity is the strength. If you want to be successful, one person cannot achieve. If you are very talented, you will be a consultant. I have been seeing in 20 years. If you are very talented, you do not know how to handle people. As a manager, you cannot open a company. You will be alone. You will become a consultant. But if you want to be successful, you should cultivate the habit of appreciating others and not quarreling with others. This will come only through spirituality. How many times do you use the word patience? Today everyone quarrels. So much quarreling. So much quarreling. Kaliga means to quarrel and hypocrisy. But you want to be successful? To maintain teams, you need a spiritual strength. So, Unless you have good control on your mind. What is IQ, EQ, SQ? Time is not there. You can go, you know, I have written separately. But SQ means spiritual quotient. Today, universities are not teaching spiritual quotient. You have to learn this outside. Spiritual quotient. Anyway, I'll finish it. We need only 5-10 minutes. So, 
I tell this to CEOs. I tell this to professionals. Hey, you are serving your company. You are serving your wife and kids, your husband and kids. You serve yourself. How? Sit in one corner every day, and uh, do meditation. I call it. I am in past twenty-five years. I have been doing mantra meditation. What? How many of you can control your mind for ten minutes without a single thought? Zero. Nobody. One one uh, one person wrote a book on Indian, of course, the head of a uh, head of the department, the psychiatry, the Mayo Clinic, the, the one of the richest clinics in the world, where all the big regions go there. He is telling it is impossible to control your mind. I want to tell him, please come to our organization. We will tell you how to control the mind. We will tell you how to maneuver the mind positively. So my request to you. I've been doing the. That's the one reason I wrote this book. Past twenty-five years, every day, two to three, four hours, I invest on mantra meditation, so that I can come before people comfortably and present. So, manastra yata iti mantra udhari tatmanam atmanam atmanam vasadi tatmahi vatmano bandur. आत्म है विपरात्मना बंधुरात्मात्मन आत्म ही आत्मना जितात्मन शत्रुत्व वर्ते तत्व शत्रुवत दिस टू श्लोक फ्रॉम सिक्स चाप्टर भगवदगीता इज अबाउट माइंड कृष्ण इज टेलिंग यू कॉन्ट कंट्रोल युअर माइंड यू आर लिविंग विथ युअर वर्स्ट एनमी यू कैन कंट्रोल युअर माइंड यू आर लिविंग विथ द बेस्ट फ्रेंड्स यू टेल यस्टे वी पर्चेज ए सिंपल कार युअर फ्रेंड्स इज Yesterday, my dad purchased BMW. Ooh, been here. You are not happy that you have a car. You are miserable. You are miserable that somebody has a better car. How many of you agree? Always compare. Uncontrolled means we compare, criticize, complain. You tell me your marks. Ninety-five. What about you? Eighty-five. You are not happy that you have eighty-five, but you are miserable. Somebody has better. So. Hey, you want to go forward in your life? Please don't compare. We you compare yourself only. Last year I was like this. This year I'm better. Duryodhan sitting in the palace, but when Duryodhan heard Pandavas got Akshay Patra, Duryodhan was miserable. So this comparison, one of the worst qualities of mind, <clears throat> it'll make you unhappy. So how to how to subdue the mind? I have one more video. It's a small. We are done. <clears throat> the Vedas, however, are not as well known for presenting historical and scientific knowledge as they are for expounding subtle sciences such as the power of mantras. We all recognize the power of sound itself, its effects. Was getting quite dramatic. Here, a high-pitched frequency shatters the thinking glass, so we can easily understand that loud sounds can produce substantial reactions. It is commonly believed that mantras can carry hidden power, which can in turn produce profound effects. The ancient Vedic literatures are full of descriptions of weapons. Being called by mantra, for example, many weapons were invoked by mantra during the epic Kurukshetra War, wherein the Bhagavad Gita itself was spoken. The ancient deployment of Brahmastra weapons, equivalent to modern-day nuclear weapons, are described throughout the Vedic literatures. Additionally, mantras carry hidden spiritual power. Which can produce significant benefits when chanted properly. Indeed, the Vedas themselves are sound vibrations in literary form and carry a profound message. So, <clears throat> so if you expose uh, the sound vibration to a high-pitched glass, it will break the glass. 
मनस्त्रायत इति मंत्र वन डे एटेंडेड बाबा एटमिक रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट 4400 साइंटिस्ट कॉन्फ्रेंस 2002 द द द हेड ऑफ द हॉस्पिटल ही सेड साइंस गुड नॉट मेक मच प्रोग्रेस बिकॉज़ साइंस डजंट नो वेदर द माइंड इज अ स्क्वायर और अ सर्कल और अ स्पाइरल he said that do you know brc is one of the organizations where there are maximum number of suicides in india because nobody knows the mind the square or circle or spiral nobody knows but very interestingly bhagavad gita 6th chapter there is so much emphasis there is so much focus on mind and my request to you all every day if you do 10 15 minutes of mantra meditation 5 minutes of pranayama a 10 minutes exercise exercise is for the body pranayam is for mind and very important mantra meditation is for the mind i was also used in uh, <clears throat> henry ford was doing research on the efficacy of mantras meditation on mind they used me because i told them i've been doing it for 25 years so i was part of the team actually they said the results were amazing there was no activity in the frontal lobes what were you doing i said i was doing i was doing mantra meditation So my request to you, you know, either you can do, you can meditate on breath, or you can meditate on sound. <clears throat> so, so if you take this one application of fifteen minutes every day, sit in one corner and do that, and before that do five ten minutes yoga or fifteen minutes yoga, then write your goal either in your closet. or in your book somewhere this is what i want to attain and plug your weaknesses and enhance your strengths and apart from all the points i have explained to you please apply and i pray that one day you all become successful thank you very much